Hey, I'm Connie. And I'm Connie. And, and we, we are, are Bad News Travels Facts. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? <laughs> Why do y'all always start laughing? I don't know. Because I'm just happy to see y'all, even though I can't see y'all. But I'm happy to be here. That's good. <laughs> Connie just came from another trip. This girl stayed traveling. How was your trip? It was good. It was good. My first time uh, to Disney World, so it was fun. Oh, you went to Disney World. Nice. Mm -hmm. went to Universal Studios. Did you see Mickey Mouse? I didn't. Um, uh, <laughs> it was like a storm that kind of hit, so I was wondering, hoping they didn't shut down all the rides, but they didn't. Uh, it kind of yeah. rained later. So they had one outside roller coaster that was real good, and then we had a couple of indoor ones that was pretty good. So it was, it was good. And then another day we went... Um, well, it's not ziplining. We went... We did laser tag. Oh, okay. And then they had like this obstacle rope course that we had to walk up these high stairs and go. And I'm not afraid of heights. But you were scared? A little fear came on me. So my sister and my niece went before me and it was moving real slow. So I'm like, oh my goodness, like it's real like that. And then when I started walking, it was like, oh, it's not that bad. And so I kind of learned a lesson about fear. Like fear oh, makes you things... feared it when you saw it, but you, when you experienced it, it wasn't nothing to be afraid Right, of. and I'm not afraid of heights. They are. Oh, so gotcha, it's like watching gotcha. them go real slow. It kind of made me nervous. Like, oh shoot! I need well, you me. probably felt their spirit, possibly, possibly. But I was like, oh, so I learned a lesson about fear, and you know, fear makes things appear worse than Sorry. they really are. So yes, it was really nothing for me to feel like. Once I went across, I didn't have to walk it slow and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was a good quick lesson. What are we talking okay. about today, though? So, um, first of all, please click like, share, and subscribe. No, like really, just click the like button. Like while you're while while you're listening to me right now, just go ahead and scroll a little bit and hit that like button. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. And make sure to leave a comment as well. Thanks. So anyway, what we're talking about today is punishment versus discipline. Mm -hmm. Um, we didn't discuss this prior, so this is just really gonna be off the cuff. Did you have to tell them that? Um, no, I'm just saying. Um, discipline and punishment are two different things. But often used but interchangeably. But often used, yes, interchangeably. Um, we'll say punishment meaning discipline, and we'll say discipline meaning punishment. So right. maybe we can just talk about the differences, and possibly I'm wondering if you can talk about the effects of both of them. Both of them. Okay. Yeah. As a, um, what is you, girl? What is you? A future psychologist. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you All know right. what was interesting? Somebody said to me, like, honey, I want to hear more of the psychology part because I think it's interesting and I don't have a background. He's like, you tap on it a little bit and then you withdraw. Yeah, you do. Okay. All the time. I just be like, it, where's, the, where's the psychology? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So tell them what's the difference. <clears throat> okay. Excuse me. All right. So I just, um, I Googled discipline versus punishment to see what they say at first so um discipline is a way to teach kids to follow rules or correct misbehavior right mm -hmm. so um oh no I'll, I'll save that thought for afterwards punishment okay discipline is a way to teach kids to follow rules or correct misbehavior punishment is a form of negative discipline it's often used to get rid of or end a behavior. Excuse me. So discipline is teaching you something mm -hmm. to change your behavior. It's teaching you something to correct your behavior. Punishment is used to make you stop right now, in a sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's negative. almost like a bit of control. It's like uh, control... To me, I feel like control is behind punishment. Okay. Okay. I can see how you say that, but say more. Say a little bit more. Okay, so your child is acting up, right? Um, I'm trying to think of an example of a child acting up. Let's say you have a 10-year-old. They keep acting up in school. You keep getting a call from the teacher or whatever. Mm -hmm. So at first, you try to talk to them like son or daughter, don't do this whatever you know what i'm saying you talk to them you apologize to the teacher you know blah 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 they still keep doing the same thing teachers keep calling finally you're just beating them like every time you get a call there's no discussion we're just i'm just <laughs> i'm just gonna beat you <laughs> so the child come walking in the door from school all happy and you just whipping them <laughs> because you got a call from the school 
Um, cause you're really trying to put the fear of God in them, but what you're really trying to do is control them. Like get yourself under control. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'll even say, so me, so I'll, I'll be a little bit transparent. So me and my husband, we have different ideas about what punishment or discipline should be. Mm -hmm. So you know, now we have, um, we have an eight year old, but she don't be doing nothing. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Um, but we do have teenagers. Um, and one of those said teenagers always kind of like push to the limits. You know what I'm saying? Like they're going to take you all the way to the limits. So, um, I think for me, I feel like discipline is more effective because, I feel like if you're going to discipline your child, they should really know why they shouldn't be doing X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. Even if they decide to do it again, they should know why they're doing it. So, or the effects of their behavior. So <clears throat> I think with punishment, we don't teach them nothing. We usually use some sort of, um, some form of rejection. Mm. Uh, rejection is very damaging. And so I think as we, as we've gotten older and we saw how we were punished or how we were disciplined, we do the same. Stuff. We realize, well, there's a couple things happening. You can repeat the same stuff that was done to you because you don't think it was that big of a deal mm -hmm. or you realize how detrimental a piece of that was, and you're like, no, I don't want to do that to my kids. But I don't think that's always necessarily the case. You would hope that something that was damaging to you as a child, that you wouldn't do it to your children. People do all the time, though. Right. Because they don't think it was a big deal. It seemed like, to me, a lot of parents don't mind their children being abused, in a sense, just as long as they aren't as abused as they were. Correct. And that is going to be a topic for another day because we need to talk about how common emotional abuse is in every relationship. Oh, yeah. And how we yeah. normalize it so much that we don't even realize that we're being what abusive. What it is. Right, right, right. Right. Okay. Right. Next, another topic. Next next week. Oh, <laughs> next that week. was good, though. Yeah. Next week. Yeah. 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 And so, so as long as I'm not doing you as bad as my dad or as bad as my mama, I'm better. As bad? <laughs> yes, what does that even mean? So for instance, I know what it means, but I'm like, you know. But I see this all the time with parents and discipline. And I'm going to say disciplining a rebellious child. Or I don't even mean to say rebellious, but like that that child. Rebellious means to, it's rebellious, to, to go the rebellious against, child. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. go against what you're supposed to do. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So the rebellious child. Okay. Or the one, the wild one. The one that won't be tamed. Right. Won't be controlled controlled right so but we want to tame them though like they're animals right so we have to find a way to do that and that's why discipline is more important and so discipline of course is teaching you something right and so you know growing up it's like don't put your hand on the stove why because i said so right. that is punishment i'm just controlling you i haven't taught you anything about why not right. to touch the hot stove right. right but when you say hey Let's put your hand closer to the stove. The sea is hot, and when the stove is hot, you can get burned, and being burned will really hurt. So I don't want you to touch the stove because right. I don't want you to get hurt. Yes. I have disciplined you. Wait, but, but you've also showed me that you care. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And so that's a challenging thing. I was looking at something, and there are there are several, there are three types of discipline. There's probably more, but the ones okay. I want to talk about. And so there's preventative, supportive, mm -hmm. and corrective. Okay. Right? So... Preventative. Right. Is... So so let's talk about you said um discipline is, right? So discipline is or strategies that I'm using to teach you to kind of manage your own behavior, right? Okay. They teach you not to do certain things, right? I'm teaching okay. you why, because obviously there are consequences. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to give you strategies to limit the consequences of a negative behavior. Right. Right. That's what I'm doing when I was on discipline. Preventative is when you establish expectations and guidelines and rules for behavior up front. Right. So like when you go to school, mm -hmm. they say, these are the rules of the school. Yeah. These are the rules for the classroom. No talking, no screaming, no yelling, no eating. I'm just right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. 
shoot, they let you eat in class. Now. I know, no, all of them. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're letting, they're trying to prevent certain things right. by letting you beforehand, know prior before to. you get a chance to act out. Let me let you know right now that that's not tolerated. Right. Now, now that's something that I don't often see in households too. Is the preventative stuff right? Because we are re we're reaction focused. We don't respond, we react. Yes. So we wait until they do something and then beat them down for it as if we taught them at first. Correct. But a lot of they times just we know didn't not teach to do them. That. Correct. How are they going to know I not I know because we don't come out the womb with those type of instructions and guidelines. Or, un you know, that's the thing with, uh, with unspoken <laughs> expectation. You have an expectation that you have not yet communicated to me. Right. Right? We think you right. should know it. Like, you hate that. Like, you, they should have known. Yeah, I do. I, yeah, 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 I do. You say. <laughs> Supportive discipline occurs in a transgression. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Go back. I'm giving a, I, I want to give an example of, um, yeah, I just thought about what I do every year before school starts. Okay. So every year when we're, you know, getting ready for school, like the beginning of August, well, they used to start school at the beginning of September. So towards the middle of August, mm -hmm. I would start working on sex talk so i'll start googling again i have sex talk with the kids every year right before school starts because they're now going to not just be with my family they're going to be around a bunch of strange i don't strangers. mean to say strange but strangers, yeah. a bunch of different types of people mm -hmm. right so i have teens now especially where they're going to school with women who look like adults yes they, they're fully developed mm -hmm. all over the place. Okay. Okay. And they they have hormones that are in play. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So we have a conversation right before school starts to talk about. And one of the things that I talked about when they, right before they went to middle school was, um, what do you call that? Sexual, um, like if I touch somebody's butt, that's called, um, what is that called? Um, Besides harassment, but sexual yeah, harassment. Yeah, sexual, sexual harassment. harassment. That's okay. it. Okay. So we had to have a conversation about sexual harassment. Okay. Because there was like a child um, in the news or something, and they were a, a kindergartner was accused of sexual harassment because he um, like kissed a little girl or something like that. This is kindergarten, five years old. Right. Okay. So I think that story came out or whatever. So we had, you know, in middle school, there's lots of touching. That's when they start, you know, they playing around, they playing tag in the mm -hmm. in the hallway, running and all of that. That's the moment where you gonna feel butts and all that sort of thing. Okay. If that's what type of person you're dealing with, right? Right. But now you cannot do that kind of thing because you can be accused of sexual harassment. They have police officers in the school now. They will arrest you on spot. So unfortunately, they didn't have that. I mean, unfortunately, they have that in such a way where you have to teach these things prior to. And I know one of my children is very impulsive. Mm -hmm. So I had to make sure to let him know consequences of actions mm -hmm. prior to each year so that we don't get ourselves into a situation where it's devastating and traumatic. But I think that needs to happen anyway, because <laughs> on another conversation, like when I talk to people about what rape is, people be out here realizing like, yo, right? When you start thinking and talking about it, like, yo, I did that. You know what right. I'm saying? And sometimes we don't consider coercion rape. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I had to tell my friend before, like my no doesn't mean convince me. Right. Because if we tell people, if we tell women, if you say no, no means mo, then any other relationship, if I say I don't want to go to the store, you don't do, oh man, I guess I'll have to go by myself because that's also manipulation. <laughs> manipulation. Right, right. Yeah, it's yeah. manipulation and it's coercion. Right. Right. And if it was a male and female incident or, you know, like whatever, we would say that's wrong. But we have to talk about that because I remember an incident with somebody telling me, and, and even though kind of had a similar incident with me, like you go, oh, visit or somebody house and you like, oh, you know, like y'all are going to do something, let's just say sexual. And you like, but I don't want to have sex. Right. But at the end of the night, you want to have sex. It's like, how did I go from I don't want to to doing it? Right, right. Right? Right. And that is it something that I really wanted to do or did I feel like, <coughs> excuse me, mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> the liquid just went down the wrong way. <coughs> excuse me. Okay. Or do I feel like I now 
have so much pressure on me, there's no way I'm getting out of here without doing that. Right. No way of getting out of here or you do everything to get me in the mood to want to do what I said I didn't want to do. Right. 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 And so sometimes we, you know, we do that. I know I had, I heard, I heard about a situation when somebody went to somebody's house and they fell asleep and the person woke them up to some type of sexual act. And so they wind up doing it just like I didn't want to have sex. Right. Right. And so we don't look at it as rape because rape is always, I beat you up or I don't know you, I tie you down. Rape is always brutal. We think yes. of it as brutal because of the movies. Right. Instead of them showing us how rape can be very subtle. Right. And that's why we don't, that's the same thing with the abuse. The emotional abuse right. is so subtle. Everybody do that. I ain't abusing you, right? Because right. abuse sounds bad. So they don't want to use that word. Yep. But anyway, that's good. You did prevent it. But I think we should have those conversations with our kids anyway. Right. Because to understand how one touch can lead to something else. And even when people say no, and it seems like they're joking, I don't care if they playing and they laughing, but no, yeah. like stop, you know what I'm saying? And so I think we need to have those conversations because when I have talked to guys, they're like, yo, when I, we talk about really what it is, mm -hmm. they be out here. Like one of my mentees said that like, yo, these dudes be out here raping girls and don't even know it. Yeah. Right. Because it's not the way that we saw it on TVs or right. it's publicized. So we consider it not what it is. And and it's it, it's so bad. You, see, um, you have something. So, well, we're talking about rape now, but we're so undisciplined. I, though. <laughs> and we are undisciplined, but um, I just typed in different types of rape. Yeah, and yeah there's, there's like ten. one, two, three, four, five, six, ten. seven, eight, nine, ten, oh. eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen, mm -hmm. or twelve. Okay, so there's date rape. We know what that is. Going on a date, getting rape, right. gang rape, a bunch group of people. people, spousal rape by your spouse, rape of children statutory rape that's when somebody's older and they're having sex with a child yes even whether or even having sex with someone younger, younger that is not and even if it's consensual right serial rape is doing it the whole prison time. rape serial rape payback rape mm -hmm. what is that payback rape also called punishment rape see punishment and or discipline. revenge rape is a form of rape specific to certain cultures particular particularly this the, the Pacific Islands. It consists of the rape of a female, usually by a group of several males, as revenge for acts committed by members of her family, such as her father or brothers. The rape is meant to humiliate and bring shame upon the father or brothers as punishment for their prior behavior towards the perpetrators. Payback rape is sometimes connected to tribal fighting. Okay. All right. Okay, okay. <sighs> okay, so there's war rape. So I guess that's rape during war times. I guess. Yeah, that would be rapes committed yeah, by soldiers. soldiers yeah, yeah, yeah. On a, like a prison team. Yeah, rape, rape, by, rape deception. by deception. This is okay. what we're talking about. So rape by deception occurs when the perpetrator gains the victim's agreement through fraud. In one case, a man pretended to be an official for a government who had power to cause negative impacts on a woman to pressure a woman into sexual activities. The courts held that he falsely represented himself and thus used deception against the woman. Right, but I think any form of deception, that's just their example. Yeah, so I actually, I know a woman who, um, she got a divorce from her spouse because they called it, they accused him of fraud. So she found out that he was a homosexual, like she caught him in the act with another man or whatever. And um, she asked for an annulment. So in the state that she lives in, you can't get an annulment if you've had, um, you know, consensual sex with the partner. There's no such thing as getting an annulment outside of that. But they let her annul it based on um deception I, deception by fraud i think that's what they said it was deception by fraud so he, he brought her to believe that he was heterosexual that he was heterosexual and he was interested in a heterosexual relationship he only married her to cover up his heterosexual i mean his, his homosexual. homosexual lifestyle child right. so corrective rape corrective rape is targeted rape against non heterosexuals as a punishment for violating gender roles so this is like on with oh i never heard of that it is a form it is a form of hate crime against lgbt individuals so this must be something new mainly lesbians in which the rapist yeah. justifies the act as an acceptable response to the victim's perceived sexual 
or gender. Oh, they did that in a so movie. You remember yeah, that old did. movie with, I was about by the to wall? Say that. I can't think of the name, and they, they tore yeah. down a wall because a man raped her by the wall because she was in a relationship. Because she with was woman. gay. Yeah. Right, right. So I guess this isn't new, but I never heard of that before. As a corrective. Corrective rape. I thought oh. more of it just like. You know, yeah, I never. Okay. Custodial rape. Custodial rape is perpetrated by a person employed by the state in a supervisory or custodial position, yeah, such as a police officer, public servant, or jail or hospital employee, mm -hmm. and includes the rape of children in institutional care, such as orphanages. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Okay. That was So I think the rape we're talking about is a deception. Yeah, right. so I and it doesn't have to be so somebody in power, but I have you come over here and it's like, oh, we only gonna do this, or this is what we gonna do, right. and then other things happen. And that's the one that probably happens the most. Way, the most, right, 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 way more often with way more people. You're going to question if you're, um, let's say you're female and you you get raped, you're gonna question the fact that you went there, you were with the person, on um, whether it was rape or not. Yeah. You know what That's I'm how saying? I did. It was like, oh, if I wasn't at the room, if I didn't stay at night, if I didn't have a tank top on and shorts, yeah, all yeah. of these things right. would have happened. Right. Yeah. I shouldn't have put them booty shorts on, chat. <laughs> it probably was a little longer, but yeah. <laughs> That's what you. But That's, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I always sleep in, though. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it wasn't like I was like, ooh, let me, you know what I'm saying? Let me wear something, blah, blah, blah. But even still, like, you know, so this is the reason why we should be talking to our children, men and women, exactly. young young girls, young boys, about what that stuff is. You know what I mean? Like when Sayla, um, you know, every year I have to talk with her, good touch and bad touch, because she's younger, of course. So she's not going to have such a deeper conversation as I'm having with um, the older ones. But, you know, she'd be like, oh, like, here we go again. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, look, I... I just want you to make sure you remember that no one should be touching any of your private areas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you shouldn't be touching nobody's private areas. And they shouldn't even be accidentally touching your private areas. Because, you know, like, you that can be some, somebody. that can be coercion. Yeah. Like, sometimes or she you're... she pushed me into you. Sometimes you're, um, you're being, what is it, groomed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if an adult is accidentally touching your private area, like that's not, no. Yeah, they're preparing you to say these touches are okay because it happens so regularly. Right. And that's the issue with abuse. It's normalized. Yes. So this is what we do. We don't teach our children any of that stuff, right? And then someone touches them and they don't tell you. And then you're mad at them that they didn't tell you. When you never said. When you never talked about it and they weren't sure exactly what it was anyway. Or even how to tell you and not be upset, not be fearful that you're going to get upset and go off on them. Right. Because right? sometimes we abuse the, the victim, right? We make them feel like it's their fault. Right. What was you doing? Sometimes we think it's their fault. Right. What was you wearing? Right. See, right. somebody could very well ask me that. Like, oh, you were raped with well, what you had on. Why like, did you go in a room when he called you to go in a room and it was just you and him? Like a five-year-old is going to think all that stuff through. Or even an adult, like somebody calls your name, you naturally respond. Right. Right. That was that was shown in the movie Fugitive. Like the guy was running away. He said his name. Like you, it's a natural habit to say. Somebody right. says Connie, I turn around. I'll be like, yes. Right. You see, what I'm saying, come yeah. here. What's up? You know. So those type of things happen, and so we make the victim feel <laughs> bad about what it is. Yes. And like as if like, oh, if I had on sweatpants, he would have done it. Like not that the person made a conscious effort to do what they did. Right. Yep. Yep. All right. So. Um, discipline versus punishment. Right. So discipline is usually a little more structured as well. So, let, so for example, if you, if you have a husband or boyfriend, or whatever, baby dad, y'all should be having a discussion on like what the discipline should be. If a child acts up preventative before you have kids, before you have children, but even if you don't do it before you have children, start now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Get on one accord. What's the punishment going to be this age, this age, this age, this but age? But what is the discipline going to be this age? Because well, we said yeah, that's more of a punishment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it's natural. It's natural. It's natural. Right, right, right. So what's the discipline going to be? Are we going to take the phone? Are we going to take the TV? How long are we going to take Who's going to be the disciplinarian? Am I sending Who's them to the father the or the say, mother? Are we both doing it? Right, right, right. Right. That so, helps against splitting, too. Yeah, that helps to create, uh, I mean, to... Um, 
not have the division. Right. Which is because if I, so this is what was happening with me and, and my, my, um, my husband. So my, let's say I got a call from the teacher about my child or whatever, and he might come home and I would say, okay, well, you're, you're not going to watch any TV or whatever. So no TV. And then my husband would come home and he's like, um, yeah, no cell phone, no game, no, no life. <laughs> Everything is gone. Like you, you just basically sit in the corner and look sad. Like <laughs> that's not funny. <laughs> I can laugh now, but it, it really wasn't funny back then. Cause I was just like, I felt like we were overdoing it on some of the punishments, especially right. because the teacher is calling to say he's getting out of his seat. And I was just like, well, if I get a call from the teacher, I want to make sure that we do some sort of discipline, but I don't feel like it warranted like everything being taken away. Right. You get what I'm saying? And, yeah. So you the punishment might have, has, has to fit the, the crime, the crime. So to speak. Well, yeah, that was my idea, right? So you might have different ideas on what you think punishment is and what you think discipline is. And so if you're married or you, if you, you got a baby daddy and y'all talking about it, you guys now have to come to some middle ground mm -hmm. on what it's going to be. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was talking to a lady the other day. She has an older child and that child um, ran away. Okay. So she, hey. <laughs> she kept, she, she like ran away like three times or something like that. So by the third time or whatever, um, she's, you know, she had took her phone. She took her the computer. The um, all the electronics, you know, were gone or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so she was saying that she had come home or whatever, and a girl came out of her room and sat in a room with her. And you know, she's basically just staring at her while she's on the phone. So basically, she. My long story short, she's like, you know, get out my face. I'm on the phone, right? So the child. When you're disciplining a child, right, you have to tell them what your disciplines are. So you can't be like, I'm going to take your phone. Let's say all your electronics. I'm going to take all your electronics. But also, I'm not going to talk to you for the next couple of days. Is that what you figured she was doing? I'm asking. I don't know. You've been gone from work all day. Mm -hmm. You're coming in the house, talking on the phone. And there's no access to you. Okay. And so I come in the room. I sit down. I'm waiting for you to get off the phone. Mm -hmm. But instead, you're just going to keep talking. And you're like, why are you in my face? Okay. Okay. So I'm like, are you still punished? Are you still punishing her? She or I'm not she sure. Didn't, she didn't see that as trying to achieve She saw it like, I'm on the phone while you sit here listening to my conversation. I'll deal with you later. That's how the parent probably looked at it. Right. But to the child, it's like, oh, now I'm not being talked to. And that's probably exactly. what it was because you've been going on day. That's why I'm coming to the house on the phone. I don't like that. that that's probably right. going to be a rule in my house <laughs> because I don't get to talk to you now. I don't get to greet you. I don't get to do anything. I don't get to say nothing. Nothing. Because you're on the phone. Because you're on the right. phone. Right. That's why sometimes I'll sit in my car and <laughs> finish my right. conversation. But me too. I yeah. do the same thing. I yeah. try not to come in the house. You know, like if I'm talking, I'll be like, okay, I'll be home in like five minutes. So just I'm letting people know if I'm just talking on the phone, mm -hmm. I, I'll be home in five minutes. That means I'm getting off when I go in the door because there's people in here who's going to want to interact with me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. So um, a lot of times a parent won't necessarily see like, okay, you're still mad about the behavior. Don't use love or intimacy as a form of discipline or punishment. Yeah, we talked about that. You can't withdraw love. Don't withdraw the love. Because Don't withdraw communication talking to them. Don't withdraw that they, they might still, if you hug them hug them every day, hug them. continue hugging them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> I think um, one thing the lady said when I was talking to her was that she didn't feel like the punishment was enough. Why? Because she wasn't crying? That's what I was like. Well, what did you want her to be? Depressed in her room? I don't know what you... Like, what are you looking for? What did she say? And I, she's looking for suffering. So now what... So what is that saying about you? Like, why is it... So when you it, suffer is when you're remorseful? I, I, I guess maybe she's equating the suffering with remorse. I don't know. 
or is a suffering pain that shows that I'm done a good job at punishing you? There you go. I was asking a question. <laughs> no, I, right. I, I feel like that's it. Like that will show me I, I've done a good job at punishing you so because now you're suffering. So now it's about you? Yes. So then that th my point is when you're punishing someone, a lot of times it's about control. Right. And this is that right. We're saying that because you're not teaching me anything. Right. It's you feeling like I've done my duty as a parent and I've told you and I put my foot down and now you know. Right. Because we talked about even with behavior, if the school keeps calling you, you looking like a parent who doesn't discipline your child. So right. you look bad. So you up the ante, so to speak. Right. Off of looks. <laughs> Right or, or no 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 no, no you, you laughing but no, for real right. but you um, you up the ante off of looks or what is perceived about you yeah that may not even be true or it could be true and also we have a tendency to magnify behavior sometimes we do because we don't want to look bad not very selfish people dang it girl you know you gotta go though <laughs> I know. Let me finish this. Okay, so, then we talked about preventative. So now we're talking about supportive. So supportive discipline, they said, um, is in a trait. It, it happens when a, trans a transgression happens. So it's kind of like a verbal warning. You know what I'm saying? So okay. like if I'm speeding and, and the officer decides not to give me a ticket, it's like, hey, don't speed again or next time you're going to get a ticket. That's a supportive That's discipline. That's a supportive uh, discipline. Okay, Corrective okay. discipline um, is when a person has failed to change their behavior. After you've okay. given a warning, after you've talked about it prior to. Okay. So now you're doing a corrective uh, discipline, which is really trying to, you know, provide consequences for a behavior that, that you don't like. The consequences, with the thing with punishment that I think we don't look, look at is there is two types of punishment. There's negative punishment, there's positive punishment, right? So we teach this in psychology. Pod positive punishment... Um, it consists of adding something adversive, something that you don't like, like a smack or something like that. Adding something that you don't like to decrease a behavior. Negative punishment is a removal of something that you like, cell phone, electronics, to decrease a behavior. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, okay, wait. So the positive, say, tell me the positive. Positive is the addition, adding something. Right. That's, so ad like, that's adversive, that you don't like. So I would say adding something like a spanking, give a child spanking when they yell at you or something like that, or they are misbehaving in school. But that's, that's an addition? Yes. The positive is adding, the negative is removing. Okay. Okay. So removing is, I'm taking your things from you. Right. That is a form of negative punishment to decrease a behavior. Punishment is about decreasing a behavior. Right. Period. Okay. And okay. it's just the way in which you do it. A lot of times, no, I think it may be half and half. Uh, initially, probably we did more positive punishment, adding a spanking, a slap, or a beating for a negative behavior, right? Or then we do the removal. I'm going to take your cell phone, your electronics. You can't go outside. That's a removal of things that they like in order to decrease the behavior. Right. And sometimes neither of those things work. Oh, girl. Right. So it was like, girl. So I, so I know. Don't, 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 <laughs> well, calm down. Calm yeah. down. Calm down. <laughs> She's getting worked up, guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think I have a child that is just like you're not gonna break me but you know I you think, know what i'm saying I, like, about it no is, matter what you do it's like i'm gonna be okay right but i think the thing about it is even with the negative and the positive punishment we need to do a little bit more of the reinforcement or the approval or the um what's the word of affirmation when something is done we are heavy punishment what we think is discipline heavy heavy so if you know, and but sometimes we're not heavy on when they the do affirmation. Well, right, affirming them, right? Mm -hmm. Because people feel like oh, I ain't got time to to keep affirming them and saying good job about stuff they're supposed to do. Then you don't have time to tell them how bad they are. Then right, but you know we feel like that. We don't give cookies out for things. You if do you ain't got to time to tell, my, but this is your child. This ain't this ain't another adult. This is your child that you are raising to be an adult. Correct. I get it. So just the affirmation they need as a child, adults need too. Like, don't only correct me, give me some credit when I do do make, make exactly. something right. Exactly. Right. So they need to do that. Discipline, on the other hand, is teaching them something, right? So let's sit down, um, you know, kind of when I got older, my dad was kind of like the, the positive punishment person. Okay. <laughs> and one time I got, um, I got the negative punishment, which I couldn't go outside or something like that. But sometimes we begin to have conversations, right? So now you're teaching me, listen. I will support you when you do things right. But when you do things wrong, I'm not going to just take your side because you're my child, right? So when you do something, I'm going to let you know that like, this wasn't a good behavior, right? Mm -hmm. Now there brings understanding. There brings some understanding. Like, honey, you can't keep talking in school. Like, it affects your grades. You know, whatever it is like that. 
You know what I'm saying? So when we begin to have conversations about why the behavior is wrong and the consequence of the behavior, right? You have taught me. So now my conscious decision, knowing the consequences I am making on my own and letting me know that there are consequences to every decision you make, mm -hmm. right? We don't teach that, especially like even with sex or anything or touching somebody. Oh, I just hit on a butt. Mom was funny, right? But the consequences, you might be known as a sexual harasser. Yeah. You might get locked up. And it might go on your record. sexual offender. Right. It might go on your record. So what yeah. you think is innocence is not. Right. 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 You know, we talk about, you know, using protection with condoms. Right. But we don't tell people condoms are not 100 percent. They this pop. People put holes in them like things happen. Right. <laughs> yes. And we need to start teaching our kids that the pull out don't work. Pull out does not work. Girl, I do teach my kids that. I'm glad because I don't want to be a grandma. I don't want to <laughs> raise no more kids. Right. I mean, I want to be a grandma one day. Right. But not now. Not, not while you know teenager. I don't. Because yeah. you ain't going to be no parent like you need to be. Right. So we need to teach them that. Yeah, and I'm not trying to be no mama. No mama. I'm not. No. You're trying, to, you're trying to be big mama? No. <laughs> okay. I'll be a grandma when it's time. And I'm going to be a good grandma. That's good. Because I'm going to love, 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 love my grandbabies. But it's got to be in the proper context and the proper time. Praise God. Not now. Well, that's good to teach you now because people think that works. And I always have people, maybe something like, yo, three of my kids was on pull out. So like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like we thought, you know what I'm saying? So we don't think about those things and we don't, we don't talk about the effects of it. And so then we're here with a situation that we didn't want. And I had two children on the pill. Oh, you did. I was on the pill. I had two kids on the pill. The best. Two the, out of five. The best way. <laughs> It's just abstinence. <laughs> like, right, right. Only right. way you get, you know what I'm saying? Right. But I think we need to teach our kids more. And even, even, um, I think we, we do need to teach our kids more. We need to learn to discipline, to teach them something. Mm -hmm. But we just want people, we want our kids to just do what we say just because we're older. Like, we have to teach people. That's like the thing when people say, take, take your hat off in the building. Why? Why am I taking my hat off? Because you said so. The building's not offended. You feel like maybe it's disrespectful to have your hat on in the building. But like a lot of people take it off. But and we have no reason, reason why we're doing that. Right. right. So, but you know, a lot of times parents think it's disrespectful for a child to ask why, but that's a perfect opportunity for you to have a conversation with them. It is. And it, and it depends on the type of why. Sometimes it's a why for understanding. Sometimes it's a sarcastic why. Right. But you know, even if it's a sarcastic why, take a deep breath. Do you really want to know why? You know, we, they be up here. We be up here. But I'm just saying, do you really want to know why? Exactly. Let me tell you, right. this is the reason why I'm not allowing you to go over their house today. Right. This is why. Right. And we, we need to say but that. If I keep saying, I told you so. It teaches right? me to follow directions. It teaches you to follow directions, but also you're going to come back to me asking me, can you go over to a person's house next week? But you also have people when they say out in the street, do something. Hey, what, do don't this. Like, cause I told you to man, it's going, or they might get a little bit more explanation. Right. Whether, whether it's true or not, you know what I'm right. saying? So it teaches me like, oh, that's what they said to do, you know? And I said, so doesn't teach me anything. There was a guy on TV and I'm going to be quick. And okay. he was talking about how he grew up and how he had his father in his life, but his father never talked to him. So like, he you was, know, he just, was emotionally he unavailable. Was, he was emotionally unavailable. So he would go to work. He'd come home from work. But when he came home from work, He's he pretty much food. ain't have nothing to do yeah. with him. You yeah. know what I'm I saying? I'm tired. I got to eat. Don't bother me. You know, blah, blah, blah. So he was saying what he, he ended up joining a gang. His family. Do you know why he joined the gang? Because they talked to him <laughs> without no problems. Whatever questions he wanted to know why. They taught mm -hmm. him why. Why are we shooting these people? Because they are robbing. Why are we shooting you know these people? Saying? This, this, why this. are we robbing this store? Why are we doing? They're coming with all the whys, and they're coming with the conversation and the intimacy he's always been looking for with his father, who's not, who's doing a, let's say, a positive life, meaning like going to work, taking care of the household. We're looking at him as the positive, right? Because he provides for his family. Because but he's provided, else. but it's not there emotionally. Right. So he's providing financial stability for them. Right. But if you don't provide, you can provide the financial stability all day and all night. If you don't provide the emotional stability, you're going to have some jacked up kids. You do. And that's what I'm looking at, even for my dissertation, the, the, the effects of emotional unavailability versus physical unavailability. How do they similar and how do they differ? Right. And how do we fix it? And, and some people should be grateful that their daddies wasn't there. 
or their mamas yeah, or this, whoever. This one, this one guy I had interviewed with for my um, externship mm -hmm. um, has said that. He was like, you know, his father wasn't there because I was talking about my dissertation. He asked me what I was doing. He was like, really? He was like, you know, I think I'm better off um, because he wasn't there. But there's still some hurt there. Like, I can oh, sense it all in that, even though he said that. And, and that might be true. Um, but God intended for it to be a male and a female to raise a family. And, and both parents are needed. And that's why I kind of don't like, and then well, in here, I don't like when men are like, okay, if the woman doesn't want to work and she's staying at home, like, well, if she's not working, what else is she doing? Even if she's staying at home and is a primary nurturer, that does not rem eliminate your role as being a father right. and out there teaching and doing all of those things. I don't mean because you go to work, I got to do all the baths every time. What we don't understand is we are raising them to be adults. Mm -hmm. In order for them to deal with other adults properly, we have to deal with them properly. Correct. And we need to teach them how to communicate, how to problem solve. What do you do in a situation? Do some role plays. Right. Do something. So like when I have kids, I endeavor to teach them because I realized I've learned a lot about communicating. But my dad communicated with me. Mm -hmm. He talked to me. We talked about everything. Right. So I had a communicator and a father. So I learned that too, but I also learned how to communicate and how to say things. And people don't understand like, it's not what you say. It's how you say it. It's your tone right. and your cadence and all of that, that affects how somebody feels. You know what I'm saying? And that's the issue with sarcasm. Like you're saying something nicely, but you're, you don't really mean it. Right, right. right. Your intentions and, and how you say it is what is hurtful. And then they pick up those things. Even yeah. the manipulation is, is said a certain way. Right. Right. And so I think that we need to teach our kids how to communicate, how to talk to girls, because some guys don't know how to do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So who is teaching them? Right. And, and even if you're a father and you don't know, like you've got kids now, find out. Exactly. Like you can't use the excuse that you didn't have a father figure or you didn't have a mother figure. Or you didn't have this and that child. We got these. We right. Google everything. Like right. every time we have a subject, we come in to talk to y'all about, we Google stuff. Like what, what does this mean? What does that mean? How can we learn it? Right. You can literally learn how to be a parent right? by Googling or go to parenting classes. And just because you didn't have, doesn't give you an excuse not to know. None, none right? excuse. Our Bishop talked about today. Excellence. Um, excellence is opposed to laziness. You can't be yeah. lazy at this point about how to be better for your child or to do better with your child yep. or to teach you how to communicate. Like that's no longer school because how long are we going to hold on to that? Right. So we're going to continue to jack up the next the future generations off of what five generations ago did? Yeah. That, come um, on. That's abusive. Yes. All right. Black business. So. <laughs> we have a black business today. Pray and slay child. Black and oh, white. Wait a minute. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So this shirt didn't come like this. I cut the V in it. <laughs> so my shirt is a V, but it doesn't come in a V. I cut it. It comes like this. But it says pray and slay. That that's the white one and this is the black one. And also there is a she on on the website, the young lady has the same shirt in black, but it um has pink writing on it mm -hmm. as well. And, and it, they have it in gray. In gray and um and I'm um, sky blue. Yes. And then these are also some shorts that can match with Yeah, it. this is the, the whole outfit it, together, the yes. shorts outfit. And then she has also these in black. So you should check her out on Facebook. Yeah, um, the link will be in the description. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, so we really appreciate y'all being here with us. Um, um, I just want to say a quick prayer. Okay. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we praise you for parents out there, Lord God. And we just pray that you give them strength, Lord God. Encourage them and lift them up. We especially lift up those who are dealing with um, children with discipline problems, children who may be, having, may be having issues in school or at home, children who have been diagnosed with things like ADD or ADHD or any type of learning disability. We just thank you right now Lord God, that you would give the parents wisdom mm -hmm. and knowledge, strength and grace for that child. Fill their hearts with love, Lord God. We pray in the name of Jesus that they don't use love or intimacy as a form of punishment, that they're, they always let their child know that they are loved regardless of the discipline, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you give them exactly what to do concerning their child and how to teach them, Lord God. Open up their communication lines that they may be able to communicate with them and, and not to be um, controlling, Lord, in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus. Lord, the one thing that I love so much about you is that you don't try to control us. Yes. And so we thank you, Lord God, that we will begin to not try to control our children, but allow them to develop into the young adults that they should be. And so we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for your leading, your guiding, and your direction in this area. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 All right. Please like, share, and subscribe. And um, we appreciate you listening. All right. All right see you later. Bye-bye.